During the summer and fall of 1938, this was the scenery of one of the crucial episodes of the Spanish Civil War. The Battle of the Ebro. The central government offensive turned the regions of Terra Alta and the Ebro's riverbank into a dark episode of war and devastation, of lives, towns, and landscapes which would never be the same again. The field was key to the progression of the battle. The Republican army took advantage of the terrain and used cliffs, mountains, and valleys as natural trenches. The River Ebro and the mountains of Cavales and Pandos became witnesses of the brutality of the battle. In the Ebro lands, the Republic had everything at risk. General Vicente Rojo designed a surprise attack, forcing Franco to send the majority of his army towards Catalonia, diverting it from the conquest of Valencia. If the offensive was successful, the Republic could force him to negotiate peace, or at least extend the war. If the war was prolonged, they could hope for its inclusion in a European conflict, already presaged by Hitler's consecutive attacks in the north of the continent. The Republican army crossed the River Ebro through three different spots, Mequinenza, Fayo, and Amposta. All three crossings were distraction maneuvers for the Francoist troops, while there was a central attack between Riva Roja and Beni Sanet. Its objective was to conquer Gandesa's communication hub, a direct connection to Aragon, Tarragona, and Tortosa. The initial offensive was a success. During the first hours, the Francoist positions between Fayo and Certa were brushed aside. At this point, the battle was focused on the arc which defines the River Ebro between Benifayet and Ribaroja. The penetration was fast, and they reached Gandesa's limits on the night of the 25th of July. However, the Republican vanguards were stopped by the Francoist resistance, who entrenched, creating a new 60-kilometer front. The Republican distraction maneuvers in the north and south of the region were soon stopped by the Francoist army, forcing the troops to retreat and concentrate in the central offensive and in the siege of Gandesa. But in Terra Alta's capital, the Republican army encountered well-armed forces, constantly receiving reinforcements from the Francoist rearguard. Gandesa was a strategic objective, capable of breaking the Francoist communications in the region of the Ebro, and the Republican army allocated many resources trying to conquer it. The 35th Division of the National Brigades arrived to the entrance of the region on the night of the 25th of July. Three days later, however, they had lost half their troops. The 16th Division replaced them on the 28th of July and kept on trying to take Gandesa. They maneuvered through the north towards the Pico de la Muerte, through the south towards the Masos de Grau, and through the center towards the Col de las Forcas and the Coma de Po. But the resistance of the Francoist army, sheltered in the interior and surroundings of the region, frustrated the Republican incursions. On the 3rd of August, the Republican army replaced their troops again, sending the 27th Division, which remained until the 3rd of September. Since they couldn't take Gandesa, the battle was at a turning point. The Republican offensive strategy transformed into a defensive battle, stuck in the Cavales and Pandos Mountains, two natural fortresses of forest and rock. After stabilizing their front lines, on the first days of August, the Francoist army decided to go on the attack. But the irregular orography of the Pandos Mountains, with high natural rock walls and narrow cliffs, complicated the climb of the Francoist soldiers. The Republicans made a fortification of those mountains and resisted the persistent airstrikes. The cruelty of the battle on those peaks was ferocious. Some positions, like Benchmark 666, were conquered and reconquered twice in one day. Finally, the Republican troops lost control over Santa Magdalena, but resisted on the rest of the mountain. 
seeking shelter on the steep terrain to stop the advance of the rebels. The orography of the region also complicated the second Frankwist counterattack. Here the land, filled with small valleys and naturally fortified cliffs, hindered the conquest and protected the Republican positions in the mountains and the surrounding towns. During the second fortnight of August, the battles were constant. The Republicans backed off just a few kilometers, but they were weakening the rebel troops with a resistance Franco was not expecting. The two first failed counterattacks and the international pressure to find a solution for the Civil War in order to avoid an extension of the conflict dividing Europe led the Francoist army to reorganize and prepare a simultaneous and demolishing attack. During more than 30 days, there were many battles and a constant back and forth in the north, center, and south of the region. The Republicans reorganized and reconquered during the night, but the Francoists won during the day. However, the Republic was inevitably weakened every day. In the middle of October, the Francoist troops had arrived to the Venta de Camposines, where the attacks temporarily stopped to regroup for the final offensive. The powerful attack, combining artillery and bombings, annihilated the Republican troops still surviving in the Cavailles Mountains. Once the town of Pinel de Bray was conquered, the rebel troops were able to advance without much resistance toward the right river border of the Ebro. Over the next days, the Francoist troops took the rest of the towns toward the east and north of the region. The night of the 15th of November, the last Republican soldiers crossed the River Ebro through Flix. On the dawn of the 16th of November, at 4.54 a.m., it was ordered to blow up Flix's Iron Bridge. The Battle of the Ebro was over. The Battle of the Ebro was over, but the wounds caused by the fight on the human, rural, and urban landscapes were still present at first sight. The region, almost deserted and poisoned by the shrapnel, was facing its own battle for survival. <laughs>